Now let us come to the question of black body radiation formula. Uh, this problem is uh, we have seen before. What is the universal function of energy density of black body radiations? As a uh, depending on the variables, frequency and temperature. This is uh, the question called a black body radiation problem. For such a formula, we can call black body radiation formula, and we know this problem was posed by Kirchhoff in 1860. There, are, there were different attempts to solve this problem to derive black body radiation formula from, from first principles. We will uh, look at three important attempts. First one historically was uh, from by Vien, Wilhelm Vien. It's called Vien's radiation formula, derived in 1896. Then uh, Rayleigh genes formula, uh, mainly by Lord Rayleigh, and then corrected slightly by James genes, and this was obtained or this was proposed in 1900 and thirdly by Max Planck's Planck's radiation formula again in 1900. Okay, we will look at each of these formula formulas uh, separately. The first formula proposed was by Wilhelm Wien. It's called Wien's radiation formula. This is the formula um, u nu d nu. Uh, let us look at this simple uh, u nu d nu. This means that energy density of black body radiations in the frequency range nu to nu plus d nu. Why we need such a such a way of expressing it? Because um, the energy density, let us remember the black body spectrum, that graph. Suppose on the y-axis, uh, instead of spectral intensity, we are plotting spectral energy density. Okay. Now we know that it's a continuous spectrum. It increases, uh, reaches some maximum, then decreases. Uh, so, energy density continuously varies with frequency. That means we cannot separate, we cannot say that, uh, okay, consider the frequency nu1, the corresponding energy density is u1, for the frequency nu2, the energy density is u2. We cannot uh, count like that, okay, because they are, uh, the frequency varies continuously, energy density also varies continuously. So, we cannot... Uh, count it like that. It's not countable. It's not discrete. Then how do we treat such continuous uh, functions? What do we do is we take a frequency nu. Okay. And uh, since we cannot uh, isolate a single frequency, we can say, okay, uh, consider a small frequency band around the frequency nu. That means we can talk about uh, having frequency between nu and nu plus d nu. Okay, nu to nu plus d nu. So in that uh, frequency band, what is the energy density in this frequency band? And for that energy density, uh, we can use this symbol u, which is a function of nu, and we put a d nu here to show that this is the energy density in the frequency band nu to nu plus d nu, where the d nu is very small. Okay, so this is to indicate the continuous variation of energy density and also to show that this is the energy density between nu and nu plus d nu frequency having values between nu and nu plus d nu okay this is about uh, this notation so in Wien's radiation formula this energy density depends on frequency and temperature like this alpha times nu cube e raised to exponential minus beta times nu by t d nu again this d nu on the left hand side and the right hand side only means that energy density uh, varies continuously with frequency or uh, we are talking about energy density in the frequency range nu to nu plus d nu. That's all the meaning of this d nu here. Alpha and beta are two constants. Nu is the frequency and t is the absolute temperature of the black body. So you can see that on the right hand side we have alpha and beta being constant. We have only two variables frequency nu and temperature t. So this energy density is expressed as a function of frequency and temperature in, in, the, in a complicated form. There is a direct proportionality with the nu cube. There is an exponential dependence on nu and t, right? This is Wien's uh, radiation formula um, by proposed by Wilhelm Wien in 1896. When you compare this formula with experimental curve, this formula matches with the experimental curve at uh, high frequencies, okay? but gives values lower than the experimental data at lower frequencies. 
So this there is a clear matching between Vn's radiation formula and the experimental data at high frequency side. But at low frequency side, Vn's formula gives lower values than the actual experimental data. Okay, so it means that it is not completely correct. But uh, in 1911, Physics Nobel Prize was awarded to Wilhelm Vien for his work on black body radiations. The next uh, attempt was by these duo, Rayleigh and Jeans. Okay, the, the derivation was mainly done by Lord Rayleigh. James Jeans made small correction only. So this is called Rayleigh Jeans formula. Now, in order to understand uh, Rayleigh genes formula, we can split it into two factors. Uh, this is the complete formula, but we will look at it into two, two, uh, two parts. Okay. Um, so, what is uh, we are uh, this Rayleigh genes formula gives you energy density. That means uh, energy per unit volume. That is energy density of black body radiations having frequency between nu and nu plus d nu. Right. So what uh, Rayleigh did was, first he calculated the density of standing electromagnetic waves in the cavity having frequency between nu and nu plus d nu. What cavity we are talking about? Remember that um, those experimental physicists uh, invented that uh, a hollow metallic cavity can act with a small hole on the uh, wall can act as, a, as an approximate black body. So, Instead of black body, sometimes the word cavity is used. Instead of black body radiations, cavity radiations is also used. So, um, Kirchhoff, uh, sorry, um, Rayleigh, uh, what he did was, he assumed that, uh, okay, electromagnetic radiation centering the cavity undergoes multiple reflections inside the cavity and get completely absorbed. So, during these multiple reflections, standing electromagnetic wave patterns are formed inside this cavity. That was uh, Lord Rayleigh assumed. Mm. So he calculated, he first calculated what is the density of the standing electromagnetic waves in the cavity having frequency between nu and nu plus d. What is the number of standing waves per unit volume? And uh, we are not going to these calculations. Mm. Uh, actually, you have to do uh, these calculations uh, uh, depending upon your syllabus. In, in, in this university, in uh, Calicut University, in the BSc Physics syllabus in 6th semester, there is Statistical uh, Mechanics and the textbook is the same one uh, that we follow now, Concepts of Modern Physics by Arthur Bracer. And uh, in that chapter, uh, Statistical Mechanics, there is a derivation of uh, this, this value, this density of standing electromagnetic waves in the cavity having frequency between nu and nu plus d nu. Okay? For the time being, we are not going into that derivation. Its value is this 8 pi nu square by c cube into d nu. Again, this d nu means uh, we are in the frequency range nu and nu plus d nu. So he first calculated what is the density of this standing waves, number of standing waves per unit volume. Secondly, uh, Riley calculated what is the average energy of one standing wave. Okay, average energy of one standing wave is kT. This you can calculate using equipartition theorem. Mm -hmm. Again, I am not going into the calculation now. Let us simply assume that it can be considered as kT, where T is the absolute temperature of the black body and K is Boltzmann constant. Its value is uh, 1.381 into 10 raised to minus 23 joule per Kelvin. See, um, energy is expressed in terms of kT. So, K is energy by temperature that is joule per Kelvin. Unit will be joule per Kelvin. This value you remember, it's a fundamental constant in nature, Boltzmann constant, 1.381 into 10 raised to minus 23. So, you get uh, density of standing EM wave, you get average energy of one uh, standing wave, right? If you multiply, what do you get? Density of energy or energy density. Okay, so the Rayleigh Jens formula is obtained by multiplying these two factors. So, energy density of black body radiations having frequency between nu and nu plus d nu is this factor 8 pi nu square by c cube into this factor kT. Okay, d nu means again we are in the frequency range nu to nu plus d nu. So, this is formula yeah, energy density is 8 pi nu square by c cube into kT. Okay. Let us compare Rayleigh Jeans formula with the experimental data. Uh, the formula matches with the experimental curve at low frequencies. Okay, at very low frequencies, there is exact correspondence between Rayleigh Jeans formula and experimental data. But as frequency increases, 
the formula gives the wrong result that energy density should increase parabolically. Um, how do we get that? Consider a black body which is in thermal equilibrium. It means temperature is constant. K is Boltzmann constant. This 8 pi C cube etc are constants. So we can see energy density is proportional to nu square. So if you are plotting frequency along the x-axis and energy density along the y-axis, um, this is like y is proportional to x square, which is the equation of a parabola. So the theoretical curve will be going like a parabola. So as frequency increases, this theoretical curve will be ex uh, increasing like parabolically. Okay, so it's a wrong result. We know that actual result is it goes, it increases, uh, but at a particular frequency, energy density becomes maximum and then it decreases, right? So this formula, even though there is a good match in the low frequency side, at high frequency side, there is complete mismatch. This, According to this formula, there should be a continuous increase of uh, energy density, but the actual uh, experimental data is that energy density first increases, reaches a maximum and then decreases. Okay, so this error in the Rayleigh genes formula is often called ultraviolet catastrophe. Okay, probably that, uh, surely that name comes uh, because the, the mismatch, the error comes at high frequency side. So for most of the uh, black bodies that we encounter, the peak is in the visible uh, ultraviolet region. Okay, so for example, sun, it is in the visible region. Uh, so visible ultraviolet region is the um, peak uh, for most of the black bodies unless the temperature is very very high. Mm -hmm. So um, so when we go to this high frequency side towards ultraviolet side uh, the, uh, the experimental curve in peaks and then decreases but the theoretical curve according to Rayleigh genes formula should, parab should go parabolically. It goes increasing parabolically. So that, uh, that is why this error is called, since the error occurs at high frequency side, uh, this is called um, um, ultraviolet catastrophe. Let us consider Planck's radiation formula. Uh, just like Rayleigh genes formula, here also we can have two different, uh, um, two different parts. Just like Rayleigh, Planck also assumed that this uh, cavity, which is an approximate black body is a collection of uh, standing electromagnetic waves and he calculated the density of standing electromagnetic waves in the cavity in this frequency range. He obtained the same value um, as by Rayleigh. They did these calculations in two different ways but they obtained the same value 8 pi nu square by c cube d nu. But the difference is that average energy of a standing wave See, uh, each mode of a standing wave can be considered as a linear harmonic oscillator. In the, the difference in the case of Rayleigh's approach and Planck's approach is that if we assume that these harmonic oscillator, oscillators are having energy uh, continuously, okay, their energy varies continuously from 0 to infinity and if we calculate the average energy, you will get Kt, the value obtained in Rayleigh genes formula. Uh, and Planck knew that uh, if we choose Kt, then uh, you will end up with Rayleigh genes formula and ultraviolet catastrophe, mismatch between uh, theoretical value and experimental data. <clears throat> so he tried different uh, ways of um, uh, obtaining the result. Okay, the, remember that um, in by 1900, the, the complete black body radiation spectrum was available. Rayleigh genes formula was available which fits with the almost uh, the high frequency side of the spectrum but uh, there is there was a mismatch in the low frequency side and Rayleigh genes formula fits with the low frequency side but there is a very drastic mismatch with the high frequency side ultraviolet catastrophe. <clears throat> so um, since the actual experimental curve was available for Planck what Planck did was he wrote down the he tried trial and error methods and he obtained, he tried some sort of a curve fitting. He wrote down different, different combinations uh, uh, of formulas. Okay, somehow um, at least partly this uh, VN's formula should be correct. It came four years before in 1896. Planck was aware of that. So partly VN's formula should be correct, partly Rayleigh's formula should be correct. And always the experimental curve is there. 
so he attempted different formulas and he actually obtained the correct value correct formula some sort of a curve fitting which can reproduce the experimental curve but when we try when he tried to derive this formula from basic theory then um, he knew that if he assumed that uh, these harmonic oscillators or these standing waves in the cavity if their energies uh, energy varies continuously if he assumed that uh, if he assumed that uh, he assumes that this energy varies continuously then uh, he will get um, only kt as the average energy so in order to get the correct expression okay because he knew the correct answer in order to get the correct uh, result he tried different uh, uh, methods and uh, in one uh, su such uh, drastic um, method uh, he attempted that energy of these oscillators are varying discreetly in other words the energy of these harmonic oscillators are quantized they are not continuous uh, in uh, multiples of h nu where h is a constant nu is the frequency of radiation n is a number so, so this energy varies like uh, n equal to zero that means energy is zero minimum energy then next is h nu okay one h nu then two h nu then three h nu four h nu it's like a step okay with the height of each step is h nu okay so step by step the energy is increasing in this way he assumed and then he calculated the average energy again we are not doing this calculation but uh, when we calculate the average energy of um, a collection of harmonic oscillators in thermal equilibrium at temperature t assuming that the energies are uh, varying discreetly in steps of h nu then the average energy that uh, we obtain and that's what Planck obtained is h nu divided by e raised to h nu by kt minus 1. So this average energy is different in Rayleigh formula and Planck's formula. Now let us multiply these two that is number density of standing waves with the average energy of one standing wave then we get energy density of standing waves. So this factor into this factor is this that is Planck's radiation formula energy density of black body radiations is 8 pi nu square by c cube which comes from this into this e raised to h nu by uh, h nu divided by e raised to h nu by kt minus 1 d nu and this is uh, Planck's radiation formula derived by Max Planck in towards the end of 1900 and this formula matches with the experimental curve at all frequencies okay this is the correct radiation formula for black body radiations uh, here is the chronology of um, the creation of Planck's radiation formula <clears throat> in 1907 7th October Rubens Henrik Rubens who was a chief experimental uh, physicist working on black body radiations at that time Rubens informed Max Planck that uh, Wien's formula Wien's radiation formula failed at long wavelengths that means low frequency side the same evening Planck discovered a new formula by trial and error method Okay, doesn't you should not assume that Planck was working on this problem for the first time. Actually, he, he was working on black body radiation problem for a for a long many years because it was a major problem at that time, a major unsolved problem at that time. <clears throat> so, um, so he, he he was involved actually. So he was aware of all these developments. Uh, he was aware of Wien's formula. He was aware of the experimental graphs. Okay, he knew that uh, Wien's formula was matching with the uh, experimental graph in the with the high frequency side. Okay, what was new to him? He, actually, Max Planck believed that Wien's formula was the correct radiation formula. So then, you know, the, the news was that Rubens uh, got the latest result that in the low frequency side or in the long wavelength side, there is a mismatch between Wien's formula and experimental data. So then, uh, Max Planck continued uh, his uh, work or revisited his work and he tried tried different uh, formula and somehow he arrived at the correct formula which could reproduce the experimental data okay uh, in on 19th october that means some 12 days later planck presented the new formula before a meeting of his colleagues and rubens was among the audience the same day rubens verified that the new formula matched with the experimental data okay he compared, uh, plotted the formal theoretical formula and uh, plotted the experimental data. He compared and he found that this new formula obtained by somehow obtained by Max Planck matched with the experimental data. But uh, this is not sufficient. 
somehow you obtain a formula means that you are you have done some good curve fitting the question is can we derive this can he derive this formula um, from the basic principle so this max planck was uh, trying to do for two months after october and on 14th december 1900 uh, around 5 pm in the evening max planck presented his derivation of the new formula before german german physical society now this is the concept this is considered as the day quantum mechanics was born okay so the birth of quantum mechanics was uh, you can say on 14th december 1900 and uh, <clears throat> the person who inaugurated this uh, or launched this uh, major area of physics was max planck uh, because of the because of his idea of energy quantization of these harmonic oscillators okay he, he introduced this uh, idea and this idea was the keystone for the development of quantum mechanics we will um, discuss that uh, in detail later okay let us uh, look at uh, black body radiation spectrum uh, here on the left panel um, frequency is plotted along the x-axis and uh, spectral intensity is plotted along the y-axis from the unit here you can see that uh, spectral intensity is plotted this capital B represents spectral intensity uh, B suffix nu means spectral intensity as a function of frequency hmm? and uh, on the right panel uh, wavelength is plotted along the x-axis again spectral intensity as a function of frequency is plotted along the y-axis and uh, both represents uh, black body radiations for a black body in thermal equilibrium at uh, 5800 Kelvin there are three graphs here the the dots uh, the yellow dots represents uh, Rayleigh Jeans formula blue solid line represents Planck's formula the violet dashed line represents VN's formula also the experimental graph is represented by this blue solid line so we can see that the Planck's radiation formula matches with the experimental graph at all frequencies VN's formula matches with the experimental graph at high frequency side but VN's formula gives lower value uh, lower than values lower than the experimental graph at uh, low frequency side when we come to Rayleigh Jeans formula there is a good match at uh, low frequency side but, but but when the frequency increases when we goes to the ultraviolet side hmm, then this is the experimental graph but uh, Rayleigh Jeans formula goes uh, proportional to nu square you according to Rayleigh Jeans formula energy density is proportional to nu square so it parabolically increases this error is called uh, ultraviolet catastrophe when we uh, make the comparisons in the with the wavelength along the x-axis uh, the shape is like this it's different here slightly different shape of the graph and uh, here this is the long uh, this is low frequency side that mismatch is there in the long wavelength side for VN's formula and uh, for Rayleigh Jeans formula long wavelength side there is matching but uh, short wavelength side that means uh, low frequency uh, high frequency side uh, there is mismatch hmm? so this is how we plot the three formula in terms of wavelength and in terms of frequencies and uh, <clears throat> Max Planck was the first person who measured the value of uh, uh, the constant H and K these two constants appear in uh, Planck's radiation formula the, what he did was he uh, fitted his formula with the experimental graph and from that he deduced the these two constants h and k uh, he was the person max planck was the person who named this uh, k constant k as boltzmann constant and uh, the constant h is now called planck's after uh, max planck it's called planck's constant okay so he was the first person who deduced the values of these two fundamental constants uh, from this graph and uh, Max Planck received the Physics Nobel Prize in, uh, for 1918 for his work on black body radiations. Max Planck is usually called as the father of um, um, quantum mechanics okay, because he introduced the idea of energy quantization. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> he was solving this problem, black body radiation problem, which was uh, postulated or proposed by uh, Kirchhoff 40 years before in 1860. And Kirchhoff is called uh, the grandfather of quantum mechanics. Mm -hmm. 
and if you look at the different slides you can see that kirchhoff's paper on black body uh, first paper on black body radiation problem in 1860 as well as Max Planck's solution you know, 40 years later in 1900 appeared in the same German physics journal, Annalen der Physics. Okay, Annalen der Physik. Um, its English translation is Annals of Physics. Uh, so that was uh, the major uh, physics journal um, from uh, second half of 19th century until the first quarter of 20th century. Okay, later in 1905, Einstein's uh, five important papers in that year called the miraculous year of einstein those five papers appeared in the same journal analenger physic okay so max planck is called uh, father of quantum mechanics and kirchhoff grandfather of quantum mechanics and this problem black body radiation problem uh, was the beginning of uh, quantum mechanics it was in the solution of this problem was the idea of energy quantization was first proposed Let us consider the low frequency limit of Planck's formula. Uh, we know that Planck's formula is uh, um, correct for all frequencies. Uh, but let us see in the low frequency limit how can we rewrite Planck's formula. Low frequency limit means <coughs> h nu that is uh, one quantum of radiation energy is uh, very small compared to kt. kt we can say thermal energy of um, <coughs> black body hmm, at the temperature T. So photon energy is very small compared to thermal energy. That is the quantitative meaning of uh, low frequency. Okay. Then this ratio H nu by KT is very small compared to 1 because H nu is very small compared to KT. If uh, that is so, then E raised to H nu by KT, in the, the expansion of E raised to H nu by KT, we can approximate to first two terms e raised to x the expansion of e raised to x is 1 plus x by 1 factorial plus x square by 2 factorial plus x cube by 3 factorial plus etc but if x the power the power factor x is very small compared to 1 then we can neglect higher powers of x that is we can neglect x square x cube etc so the first two terms will be 1 plus x so instead of x we have here h nu by kt since h nu by kt is very small compared to 1 in the low frequency limit, this e raised to h nu by kt we can approximate as 1 plus h nu by kt. Okay. If that is so, the average energy of a standing electromagnetic wave in Planck's formula becomes, um, what is um, our expression for average energy? Look at the previous slide on Planck's radiation formula. Um, the expression for average energy was uh, h nu divided by e raised to h nu by kt minus 1. This will go to, instead of e raised to h nu by kt, we can substitute this 1 plus h nu by kt minus 1. Plus 1 and minus 1 will cancel. This h nu by kt in the denominator will be multiplied by kt by h nu, then h nu will cancel. So this will be equal to kt. That is average energy of one standing electromagnetic wave. In Planck's radiation formula, it is this, but it will reduce to kt in the low frequency limit. We know that both in Planck's radiation formula and Rayleigh Jeans formula, one part that is uh, a number density of standing waves is the same, 8 pi nu square by c cube d nu. The difference between the two formula is uh, in the um, expression for the average energy of one standing wave. But now in the law of frequency limit, what we see is that the average energy of one standing wave as in obtained in Planck's radiation formula can be uh, approximated to kt, which is the average energy of one standing wave obtained in Rayleigh Jeans formula. So that means at uh, low frequency limit, uh, Planck's formula reduces to Rayleigh Jeans formula in the low frequency limit. Uh, remember that uh, Rayleigh Jeans formula matches with the experimental data in the low frequency limit or long wavelength limit. So it is natural, it's expected that Planck's radiation formula can be uh, rewritten, should be rewritten as Rayleigh Jeans formula in the low frequency limit. That's what we have shown here. Similarly, consider the high frequency limit of Planck's formula. High frequency limit means uh, the photon energy H nu is very large compared to thermal energy Kt or H nu by Kt is very large compared to 1. Then uh, in the Planck's formula, remember that in the denominator we have this e raised to H nu by Kt minus 1. What happens to this quantity? 
um, when h nu by kt is very large compared to 1, this e raised to h nu by kt must be very large compared to 1. So we can neglect this one in the denominator. Okay, this factor we can approximate as e raised to h nu by kt. Using this approximation, Planck's formula, this formula reduces to um, what happens in the denominator we can neglect this one. So e raised to h nu by kt becomes comes to the numerator e raised to minus h nu by kt and we can combine this h nu with uh, this factor this number density of standing wave, waves factor we will get 8 pi h will come here nu square into nu becomes nu cube divided by c cube like this now this formula is exactly like a vn's radiation formula remember that in vn's radiation formula there were two constants alpha and beta if you put alpha equal to this constant 8 pi h by c cube and beta equal to h by k okay then this will be like energy density is equal to alpha times nu cube e raised to minus beta times nu by t d nu which is vn's formula okay so simply equate alpha equal to 8 by h by c cube and beta equal to h by k so <clears throat> the high frequency limit of Planck's radiation formula is exactly vn's formula again remember that uh, vn's formula matches with the experimental data in the high frequency limit so it is natural that Planck's radiation formula reduces to Vn's formula in the high frequency limit. Uh, here is a summary of what we have done. Planck's radiation formula is applicable at all frequencies. In the low frequency limit, uh, that means in this limit, h nu very small compared to kt, Planck's formula reduces to Rayleigh's formula. In the high frequency limit, that is h nu very large compared to kt, Planck's radiation formula reduces to Vn's formula. Here is an example of a perfect black body spectrum in nature. Um, this is called a cosmic microwave background radiation, CMBR for short. Uh, this is actually the remnant radiation of Big Bang. If uh, our universe originates, um, originated in a single Big Bang, in an explosion of space and time and matter, then uh, it has been calculated that then as the universe expands from this initial explosion then the radiation will uh, during the expansion the radiation will cool down okay and now this original remnant radiation of the original explosion big bang uh, should be spread throughout uh, uniformly throughout the universe with a very low temperature okay <clears throat> and uh, I think it was Gamow, George Gamow, who first uh, calculated uh, the present temperature uh, from the age of the universe, estimating from the age of the universe, he approximately calculated the present temperature of the um, this background radiation. And uh, we know this Vn's displacement law. If you know the temperature, then corresponding, uh, and if uh, this this entire uh, expansion or the, this radiation is like the radiation emitted by a black body which we can assume so then uh, because it starts with a high density <clears throat> then um, then um, if you know the present temperature then we can calculate what is the peak wavelength uh, from the Vn's displacement lambda maximum is equal to B by T so from the temperature if you calculate the wavelength you will get that uh, in the microwave region okay so this is uh, a data of cosmic microwave background radiation uh, from this uh, red crosses indicates the data from a satellite core okay uh, cosmic background explorer that satellite is called and uh, this scope data and the is the red crosses and the blue line indicates the um, black body spectrum from the theoretical Planck's radiation formula now you can see there is a perfect fit that means the, the cosmic microwave background radiation is exactly like the radiation emitted by a black body. And what is the peak wavelength? Um, here it is frequency. It is uh, 4, this is in centimeter raised to minus 1, 4 points, uh, I think 5 point something centimeter raised to minus 1. If you work it, work out this, thing, convert this into lambda, okay, uh, then <clears throat> this is actually uh, frequency in centimeter raised to minus 1 means it is actually wave number. So if you take the reciprocal of this one, right, and then we will get the value uh, some a few millimeters. Okay, and we know that the millimeter range is the 
uh, wavelength of microwave region that is why this is called a cosmic microwave background radiation i think the temperature is nearly 2.3 kelvin um, something like that okay so you can uh, check that uh, anyway this uh, cosmic microwave background radiation uh, fits the black body radiation spectrum exactly so this is uh, an, an example of a perfect black body spectrum in nature with this uh, we complete the discussion on black body radiation problem uh, in the next class we will look at um, photoelectric effect next topic um, photoelectric effect we know that uh, what is photoelectric effect when, when radiations are incident on a metal surface electrons are instantaneously ejected and uh, in the introductory class i mentioned that it was einstein who solved this problem in 1905 now we want to know how did Einstein's solution of this problem raise the idea of energy quantization to the new level. Okay. Um, after Max, Max Planck, it was Einstein who made significant contribution uh, to the development of quantum mechanics in the, in the early years of uh, the energy quantization and the early years of the development of quantum mechanics. So what was Einstein's contribution? We will see that in the next class. Thank you.